Welcome to 99th Monkey Liberty News for Thursday, February 6, 2014. I am beginning today with a look at something that happened a little while ago, but never made the front page. This is amazing, I find, from IntelliHub. In 19 minutes, a team of snipers destroyed 17 transformers at a power station in California. Uh, th this is the kind of genuine vulnerability that we have. People, everybody it pays attention when there's a school shooting or a movie theater shooting. Sometimes these things just really seem like they were set up. Uh, but for one reason or another, even if they weren't set up, the press wants people to pay attention to them. There's an agenda behind it. Uh, I guess there's no agenda behind uh, making something like this known that is a genuine threat. If you live in a cold area in the winter time and you've been without power for any amount of time at all, you realize that it very much is it, it impacts people's lives. Uh, older people, people who can't get anywhere, um, die. People die when they don't have electricity. And this is, of course, a, a great argument for getting off the grid and providing yourself with your own source of power. But this is, this is the kind of issue that nobody wants to look at. And, you know, we have to pop the hood on some of these things and require the press to acknowledge these kinds of things, give these these kinds of issues the sort of attention that they merit. And, uh, you know, so the threat isn't people driving down the freeway. The threat isn't uh, people carrying concealed weapons in a shopping mall. The threat is a team of snipers out on some remote hill somewhere shooting out 17 Transformers. And I, I just, I found this article very significant. From RT, fracking is draining water from U.S. areas suffering major shortages. And uh, just another example here of toxins and uh, just destroying our, our earth, destroying our country, and taking water away from people in order to frack and damage the earth and get oil. Here from YouTube is an RT video. British government launches DDoS attack on Anonymous. And there's been, you know, there, there, there are these battles uh, between hackers. Here from RT also, happy birthday, Mark. Syrian Electronic Army hacks into Facebook's domain. You know, it's an inconvenience to be without internet or to not be able to access a certain website, whatever. And it's, certainly it's serious if people are moving money around, if hackers are moving money around and, and taking money out of, you know, real people's bank accounts. Uh, but how great would it be if wars really were all just uh, fought online, you know, between one one group and another group online and uh, nobody would die that way. I, I think that if you know they want to have these wars please have at it. Uh, now a much more serious topic that has come on into the radar probably more personal for me because I like this man as an actor Philip Seymour Hoffman. This is an RT video Afghan heroin production on the rise. And there's just this, this odd duality in American thinking between being upset when somebody like Philip Seymour Hoffman dies of a heroin overdose, but yet turning a blind eye to the DEA's involvement in bringing drugs into the country and the military's involvement in protecting the poppy fields in Afghanistan. And this, so this topic, you know, and I believe it's, there are always plans behind 
uh, these kinds of things when they when the media makes a big deal of them. What is the agenda? I'm not absolutely sure, but I do believe that uh, it's likely, personally, I believe that it's likely that for one reason or another, Philip Seymour Hoffman was intentionally killed. I'm not absolutely sure what that reason is, but uh, I believe that this is almost evidence. They want to serve it up to us in this nice, neat little package with the ribbon tied around it. Suspected heroin dealers busted in Hoffman death probe. Okay, so once the villain is caught, everybody is satisfied, nothing to see here, move on. Well, and I don't claim to have any kind of hard knowledge. This is just processing this information, wondering about things. From Truth Revolt, Hunger Games to technologically replicate Philip Seymour Hoffman. In other words, uh, they're effectively going to use CGI to, to what they, you know, this says to fill in the gaps. Uh, they're going to put a representation, graphical representation. I'm sure it's very sophisticated, but nonetheless, it is a graphical representation of this man into the Hunger Games. Uh, what is to prevent? Hollywood from from doing this uh, and maybe they've already been doing it there was an Al Pacino movie a few years ago about a female actress who was completely CGI and uh, I I can see Hollywood wanting to do this they can let's face it uh, the, the cabal wants to cut out any human element where a, an actor or someone with influence might become aware and begin to make noises about the evil in Hollywood and other places. So I, I just, I find this, this very interesting. This whole thing is just a little too neat, a little too clean. Oh, they already found the heroin dealer. Okay. Uh, and there is a there is a lot of noise right now also about how dangerous marijuana is, which I believe is a complete fallacy. We saw a, an absurd <laughs> image on Facebook yesterday of a lung uh, that that so it was supposed to be a lung of someone who had smoked tobacco and a lung of someone who had smoked marijuana. And the marijuana. <laughs> It's not funny. I, I mean, the marijuana lung was appeared very diseased, and the tobacco lung appeared healthy. But it was it, I. I don't. I'm not even convinced that that diseased lungs look the way the lung, the diseased lung, was represented in the image. It, it's just there's a lot of of fear out there. I think I think that it's in the interest of the cabal for people to be afraid of drugs, uh, and you know by just association if people are oh my gosh he died of heroin drugs are bad uh, marijuana is a drug marijuana is bad and I think they're, that they want to frighten people away from marijuana and there was an article this morning about uh, how many more car crash fatal car crashes there are involving marijuana I I just I'm not buying it and that's that's just me but I'm not buying it and RT had this article, Obama's deputy drug czar admits marijuana is less dangerous than alcohol. Now, certainly alcohol is potentially very dangerous, and we're all aware of that. Um, so this isn't stating there's zero danger with marijuana. But used under certain circumstances, you know, for, for people who are ill, uh, if it's in, in food, or, you know, it doesn't have to be smoked in order to receive the positive benefits. And some of the marijuana that has a lot of very positive health benefits even has less THC and more of uh, other cannabinoids. And um, it, at least, you know, this guy is admitting marijuana is less dangerous than alcohol. So the legalization goes on. I believe they're desperately trying to block it. The cabal is desperately trying to block it so that they can maintain control. 
I had an article the other day that stated that the cabal is losing a lot of money because uh, the drug trade is being taken out of their hands as legalization occurs and prohibition ends. So hopefully this, this tide, this green tide, is large enough and powerful enough to blow right over some of these negative articles. Here from Mail Online, is Twitter making you stupid? Social networking sites are making it hard for people to think for themselves. Just a little food for thought here. Uh, Twitter and Facebook could be lowering your ability to think analytically. And even as I stated yesterday, if you, certainly if you do just allow yourself to be born along and you just float on this this wave, this you know social media wave, and when you click on it, you just look at everything they want to show you instead of being selective. Yeah, this it probably would make you stupid. But uh, if you use it with intention and focus, then I believe some of these things are very helpful and very beneficial. And this, this article might be uh, negative to block the great sweeping influence of the liberty movement and the truth movement via social media. So, you know, certainly something to be aware of, how much time you spend on it, and whether your mind is active or passive when you're processing these things, but uh, they have been very beneficial and continue to be beneficial. This article from the Daily Caller email, IRS's learner, Treasury Department secretly drafted new rules to restrict nonprofits and thereby to go after conservatives. And uh, they planned the new rules in 2012 while the IRS targeting of conservative groups was in full swing and not after the scandal broke in order to clarify regulations as the administration has suggested. Yeah, right. <laughs> So, you know, it's pretty obvious that they, that they did, they were going after conservatives. And uh, that's, we, I guess we already knew that, but just a little more confirmation here. From Dutch Sense, I probably should have had this with the fracking article. Large spill causes major environmental damage in North Carolina. You know, North Carolina, one of the most beautiful places, the, certainly the coastline, it's, uh, it's just, it's beautiful. There's a lot of very wild-looking uh, beachfront there, just stretches of empty beach where there are bird sanctuaries. And um, this kind of fits in with my point of view that, which I've stated before, that I, I believe that they are intentionally poisoning some of these areas in order to uh, get people to move away and desert these areas because they are all part of the Agenda 21 rewilding plan. You look at the North Carolina coast and uh, it's virtually all red. They do not want us there. And I suspect that this is one of the ways they are getting us moved away from there. And um, this is very in-depth. I have not listened to this yet or watched it. It's an hour long. LPAC Weekly Report, The New Paradigm for Mankind. And Cody Jones discusses some helium-3 fusion concepts contrasted with Lyndon's frank and truthful discussion of the potential outbreak of thermonuclear war. And that I believe they are promoting helium-3 as a, a new energy source that would be much safer, much cleaner, and much more beneficial than current nuclear energy. And, of course, there are a lot of potential energy sources that are being stifled. So hopefully Lyndon LaRouche will be able to use some of his influence to bring them forward. And... For the good news of the day, uh, from Koila Pele's blog, Neil Keenan update, the cabal is in check, checkmate coming. 
I think that uh, it's it's fair to take what Neil Keenan says with a grain of salt. Not everybody believes uh, that everything he says is true, but uh, having read through this, there's some information here that I believe could very well be true, and certainly it's encouraging. And uh, one interesting thing just about Koila Pele's blog, I, I noticed he was really closely uh, kind of in league with American Kabuki and removing the shackles and when they went off into OPPT he kind of held the center of the road <laughs> and uh, continued on his path so I respect him for that. So thanks Koila Pele and uh, thanks Neil Keenan. With that, I thank you for tuning in for today's 99th Monkey Liberty News. Weeping Mandor for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hoping that you will love one another, take care, and insist on liberty.